Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. It's the holiday season in Canada and most of the world. I wish all of you happy holidays and a great 2023. Today, I will introduce Yao Kua Fen Li or separation of the waist and the hip, an important concept used in the internal style of martial arts, especially in Tai Chi practice. This is an advanced topic and I'm sure it will help you improve your practice. I will also talk about how to apply the same concept in Xing Yi and Ba Gua practice in upcoming videos. Quick announcement, the High on T section will be going on an indefinite hiatus starting next week. So far, I have introduced 34 types of teeth and well, I'm aware I have only stretched the surface and I do plan to resume it in the future. I think the beginning of 2023 is the right time to try something new. Ever since I started introducing Chinese teeth, I have received a lot of support and encouragement. The motivation behind this work has been to promote a healthy lifestyle. Tea is not only a healthy beverage, but also an icon of Chinese history and culture. Of course, appreciating tea has nothing to do with martial art and Xiu Dao practice, but Tea is sure to make your practice a lot more enjoyable. Furthermore, I do not operate any tea business, though some of you have been encouraging me to do so. So far, I've enjoyed sharing my passion for tea and its appreciation with you all. But I think it's time to move on to other interesting topics. So, let me thank you all once again for your kind and encouraging words for this section. Next week's video will have a new warm-up section, Dao De Jing, Commentary and Xiu Dao. Thanks to my student Andrea Morozzi for coming up with that idea. Andrea is also a teacher of internal style in Italy. His contact information is in the description. So, let's end 2022 on a high note by getting high on tea one last time. This week's tea is a Qi Men Hong Cha, one of the top 10 famous teas in China. Qi Men is the name of an area in Anhui province. Hong means red and Cha means tea. Put together, Qi Men Hong Cha means the red tea produced in the Qi Men area. By the way, I have introduced many teas listed in the 10 famous teas in prior videos. However, among the 10 teas, Qi Men Hong Cha is the only red tea that has been nominated in the red tea category. In other words, well, there are many types of good red teas. Qi Men Hong Cha is the only red tea on the overall top 10 list, meaning this tea is excellent. There is a famous proverb in the tea community, Qi Hong Liu Lui, or red tea from Qi Men and green tea from Lu An. So, Qi Hong or Qi Men red tea is one of the best teas in China. Qi Men Hong Cha was invented at the end of the Qing Dynasty, so it has a history of only about 150 years. The tea processing method used was borrowed from the one of the Ning red tea, but only locally produced tea leaves. Many processing procedures have to be followed to produce high-quality Qi Men Hong Cha. Normally, a bud with one, two, or even three leaves is used. 
Qi Men Hong Cha is available in many unique flavors such as rose, fruit such as apple, honey, and other flowery flavors. Some people call the flavor of this tea Qi Men Xiang or Qi Men Fragrance, meaning that the flavor of this tea is very identifiable. In the West, people normally consume this tea with milk, but in China, people only appreciate the flavor provided by pure tea leaves without any additives. Since the production of a Qi Men Hong Cha requires many procedures, it takes a lot of time, so people call it Gong Fu Red Tea. Gong Fu here means time consuming, not a martial art at all. There are now different new variations of Qi Men Hong Cha in terms of the leaf shape, but the overall flavor is the same. Qi Men Hong Cha is the best brewed with water at 90 degrees Celsius for higher temperature. Normally, people will not drink the first brew since the flavor of this tea gets extracted from the second brew onwards. Also, this tea can be brewed multiple times with the flavorful decoction even after 5 brews. I have a few cans of Qi Men Hong Cha. This is a high quality one with the bright black color made with the early spring bud and uh, one leaf. This is the tea decoction. Very nice dark orange color and a strong rose flavor. Qi Men Hong Cha is uh, suitable for those who have a sensitive digestive system but still want to enjoy a cup of nice tea. It is considered a warm tea compared to some cold teas such as green tea. Good quality Qi Men Hong Cha is expensive but overall very affordable due to the annual quantity produced. I'm sure you all will enjoy this wonderful tea. Do let me know your experiences with Qi Men Hong Cha in the comments. With that, let's move on to today's main topic, Yao Kua Fen Li. Topics covered in today's video include first, Yao and Kua in Chinese martial arts, second, Yao Kua Fen Li, third, practice of Yao Kua Fen Li, fourth, principles of Yao Kua Fen Li, fifth, Misperceptions of Yao Kua Fen Li, 6 Demonstration, and 7 Takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1 Yao and Kua in Chinese Martial Arts. In last week's monthly QA, I answered a question asked by M Mario Thompson about the practice of the waist and the hip. In that video, I only gave a very brief answer and promised to make a dedicated video to elaborate on this topic. It's time for it today. Thank you again, Mario Thompson. Yao means waist and kua means hip. As mentioned in last week's video, many ancient Chinese martial art training manuals very often mention the term waist to actually mean the area including both the waist and the hip. Since many translators do not understand the original meaning of the term yao used in martial art training, they end up translating yao per modern Chinese to mean only the waist and not include the hip area. This mistake is caused by both interpretation and translation. So, for the rest of this video, I will use the modern Chinese translation 
腰 to mean only waist and the qua to mean hips. So where is the yao located in the body? Yao is the part between the end of the rib cage to the hips. Then there are two parts of the waist. One is the lower back area or the area opposite the navel. The other collective parts of the waist are the sides of the body. So two side areas and the lower back area comprise the waist. Also, the side waist is more flexible while the back waist is more solid. Now, how about the qua? The qua or hip area is the area on each side of the pivots. Bear in mind that hips in martial art practice means the whole area, not the anatomical ball and the socket joint. In martial art practice, we focus on the concept of an area instead of a specific joint in dealing with movement and power generation. This is an important point you should bear in mind, or else martial art practice would be reduced to a mere analysis of anatomy. Since the differences in these two areas are caused by the body structure, it's very common for people to confuse the two. So, a term used to describe the mistake of this confusion is yao kua bu fen. Yao means waist, kua means hip, bu means without, fen means to differentiate. Put together, it describes the mistake that no differentiation between waist and hip. In other words, it is a mistake caused by confusion between the waist and the hips, which I discussed in last week's video. We all know that those two areas are some of the strongest areas of the body in terms of body generation. In the old days, this whole area was also called Dan Tian a term in Taoist meditation but later on adopted by martial art practice to indicate the source of martial power. Check out my video titled Dan Tian, The Source of Internal Strength is Planned, link is in the description. So, in martial art practice, martial power is actually generated by this whole Dan Tian area. In traditional terms, people commonly use the term Dan Tian to describe the whole area instead of carefully differentiating one from another, which is yet another reason for the confusion and the misunderstanding. Traditionally, the solution used to manage the practice of that area in martial art training is called Yao Kua Fen Li, or the separation of the waist and the hip. So let's look at Yao Kua Fen Li in detail in the next topic. Topic 2 Yao Kua Fen Li. If we take the term at face value, it means that the Yao and the Kua or the waist and the hip should separate. After understanding where the waist and the hips are in the martial art context, we should now look at what the word separate means. Separate here actually means to handle the waist and the hip separately instead of moving them together without differentiation. So, it is about the synchronization between the waist and the hip. In other words, how to integrate different separate movements made by the waist and the hips is indeed the real meaning of separate. Separation is the means for integration. Let me take a Tai Chi movement to explain this concept. In Tai Chi practice, there are many weight shifting movements. 
So very often, a Tai Chi practitioner simply shifts the body weight by moving the waist and the hip together. This is actually a mistake. Therefore, shifting the hip first and then shifting the waist is the right approach most of the time. Also, as mentioned in the previous section, there are two main areas that consist of the whole waist area, including the lower back area and the two side areas of the waist. While the side parts of the waist tend to be more flexible, the lower back area tends to be more solid. In practice, for example, in a weight shifting movement, the actual waist movement relies on the strength of the lower back area, not at all on the side areas of the waist. Or you may try to move the side parts of the waist area, but it actually will make the movement unstable if you move the hip at the same time. So, the separation of the waist and the hip can stabilize your Tai Chi movement. It is a bit abstract to visualize this movement. Now, pause this video and try a weight shifting movement with conscious attention on your waist and the hip areas to see what I mean. Resume this video after. Also, being able to deal with the waist and the hip separately is a prerequisite of a Tai Chi Fa Jin. For example, the famous Tai Chi proverb, Xing Qi Ru Jiu Qi Zhu, or circulating the Tai Chi energy is like the movement of nine pearls. The separation of the waist and the hip is the key to possessing the Jiu Qi Zhu energy, or energy transformation in a circular fashion, especially waving energy in Tai Chi Fa Jin. The Nine Pearls concept should be applied to not only the overall energy circulation pattern, but also the local area, the lower Dantian area consisting of the waist and the hip. To summarize, dealing with the movement of the waist and the hip separately for better coordination is the key aspect of stable movement and power release. It is a very subtle practice, but a key factor in practicing Tai Chi at an advanced level. So, how about you practice Yao Kua Fen Li? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 3 Practice of Yao Kua Fen Li. Now that you know the difference between the waist and the hip in the martial art context, and also why you have to pay attention to the separation of the waist and the hip, let's now talk about how to actually practice it in Tai Chi. First, the hip controls the direction of a movement, while the waist follows the hips, especially in weight shifting movements. In other words, the hip has to be stabilized first, then the waist turning follows the direction of the hip. In a Tai Chi movement, the body's horizontal rotation made by the side part of the waist is actually done through the rotation of the side part of the waist around the lower part of the back. In other words, the side areas of the waist rotate with the lower part as its center towards the hip that is already fixed. Also, the lower back is important in a movement when the direction of a movement has been set by the hip. So now, the practice becomes the waist turning motion made by the side part 
and the center part of the waist. Between these two areas, the center part is the key aspect of the waist movement. As Chen Xin said in his Tai Chi book, quote, Jue Xiao Li Liang Yao Zhi Zhong, Liang Shen Zhi Jian Ming Men, Wei Shang Xia Ti Zhi, Guan Jian Shu Niu. End quote. Translation The key aspect is to take the center of the waist, the area between the kidneys, as the pivot that connects the upper and the lower part of the body. End translation. Here, Chen Xin emphasizes the importance of the lower back area, which is the solid part of the waist. Again, to fully understand this part, you may need to rewatch that part multiple times and also need to pause this video and try it out yourself. In a Tai Chi Fa Ji movement, the hip has to be fixed first, then the waist turns for the Dan Tian power to reach its optimal level. Normally, the hip moves slightly faster than the waist so that the hip will reach its target position before the waist turns in order to generate the Dan Tian power. It is another example of the famous Tai Chi proverb, Xing Qi Ru Jiu Qu Zhu, or circulating the Tai Chi energy is like the movement of nine pearls. And uh, the hips Early arrived position is the leading pearl. In other words, the waist chases the position of the hips in most of the Chi movement. It is worth noting that in Tai Chi routine practice, paying attention to each of the detailed movements of the waist and the hip through slow motion practice helps a Tai Chi practitioner to sense energy change in the Dan Tian area. This is what makes Tai Chi an internal style. It is also why Tai Chi formal practice emphasizes slow motion practice. It is a process to internalize the skills gained by managing the subtle practice of each detail. Sensing the separation of the waist and the hip is just a case in point. With regards to the good practice of the waist and the hip, a famous Tai Chi term, Sun Yao Chen Kua, or relax the waist and the sink the hip, is a general guiding principle for the overall practice of the waist and the hip area. I have introduced more principles built upon this one in the next section. Also, I'd like to point out that the vertical motion of the upper body is managed by the spine and the surrounding muscles. So, the angle of the waist is controlled by the hip, and the upper and the downward motion of the upper body is controlled by the spine, while the rotation of the upper body is executed by the waist. These relationships should be clearly understood so that a practitioner will know how to integrate all the aspects together as one in executing a Tai Chi movement. Again, Tai Chi practice is the process of accumulation of details. To summarize, the hip should lead the waist. Now, let's look at some important principles of Yao Kua Fen Li in the next topic. Topic 4. Principles of Yao Kua Fen Li Yao Kua Fen Li is an advanced topic in Tai Chi practice. 
Already abstract topics can be better understood with some important relevant principles. Let me introduce three proverbs that I created by summarizing the teachings of prior generations of Tai Chi practitioners. They are first, Kua Wen Yao Huo, second, Fa Jin Tong Jin, and third, Shang Ti Xia Chen Zhong Jian Lian. Let me explain them one by one. First, Kua Wen Yao Huo. Kua means hips. Wen means stable, Yao means waist, Huo means flexible. Put together, it means that while stepping forward or shifting the body weight, the hips should be very stable, but the waist area should be flexible. As explained previously, the hip leads the direction of a movement, so the hip should set the direction first. Then, the waist area moves by following the hips. Also, it is very important that the waist be flexible, so that it can follow the hip movements in power generation. Or else, the whole area will be stiff. It's imperative to not go against the natural structure of the human body. So, what I'm emphasizing here is to simply follow the natural body structure to optimize its martial functions for use in self-defense. Second, Fa Jin Tong Jin. Fa means release, Jin, Jin means power, Tong means together, and Jin means tensified or solidified. Put together, it means that when working on the Fa Jin movement, both the hip and the waist should be solidified at the last moment. It is the momentary solidified motion for a very short time and then relaxes right away. But the movement when your body part reaches the opponent's body part in a Fa Jin action, both the hip and the waist should momentarily become tensed or solid in order to maximize the impact of Fa Jin. At this moment, both of them intensify the structure simultaneously. It is about the right timing, which needs to be practiced constantly in order to master it. Third, Shang Ti Xia Chen Zhong Jian Lian. Shang means upward, Ti means lifting, Xia means downward, Chen means sinking, Zhong means middle, Jian means parts, Lian means connected. Put together, it means that when maintaining a structure, in general, the body area above the waist should have a lifting energy, the area below the hip should have a sinking energy, and the area between the waist and the hip should have a connecting motion between these two parts. This proverb is used to maintain an overall Tai Chi body structure. It is a comparatively stable state. For example, while maintaining a stable posture while practicing Tai Chi form. It is worth noting that the lifting feeling is created by the spine and the top of the head, while the sinking motion is created by the hip area. The middle area, the space between the waist and the hip, should have a connecting sensation that makes the upper and the lower parts of the body integrate together naturally. This principle can be used to test if a Tai Chi structure is stable or not. Even though this principle is mainly applied in a static state, it can also be applied in some dynamic states. Those were three important principles related to Yao Kua Fen Li. These principles have to be internalized in practice to derive 
and any benefits. To achieve this benefit, a practitioner has to analyze each of them into movement and also test and apply each principle in form practice. That is the traditional way to learn a principle. Abstract concepts and practices are invariably misunderstood in general. So, what are some misunderstandings of Yao Kua Fen Li? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 5 Misperception of Yao Kua Fen Li. Managing the practice of the lower dentin area or the waist and the hip area is the key aspect of any Tai Chi practice. Very often, this concept is either ignored or misunderstood. For example, a very common misperception is that since Tai Chi practice emphasizes the concept of one path leading with other path following, the waist and the hip should move together. This is a common misperception which I will debunk today. Yes, it is a fundamental principle of any Tai Chi practice that one part leads and the other parts follow. However, this principle does not mean that it is the physical movement. Instead, it is about the energy flow. When one part moves, the energy of the other parts will follow, including subtle adjustment or subtle motion. It does not mean that different body parts will move at the same speed and the same distance simultaneously. Subtle motions, including changes in strength, are considered moving as well. So, the main misunderstanding here is of the term follow. It does not mean a physical movement in Tai Chi. This misunderstanding is one of the root causes of the neglect of the practice of a separation between the waist and the hip. So, focusing on subtle adjustment of motion, energy, and strength without any obvious and observable movement is considered following. Going forward, pay attention to the different movements created by the waist and the hip in terms of timing, sequence, and any necessary subtle aspects. I guarantee you that you will notice firsthand the progress in your Tai Chi practice. Topic 6. Demonstration Today, I'd like to demonstrate a Tai Chi movement. The name of this movement is Qian Tang or Wade Forward, which is from the Chen style first routine. So, this is the movement. Topic 7 Take a Waste. First, many ancient Chinese martial arts training manuals very often mention the term waist to actually mean the area including both the waist and the hip. Since many translators do not understand the original meaning of the term Yao used in martial arts training, they end up translating Yao per modern Chinese to mean only the waist and not include the hip area. Second, dealing with the movement of the waist and the hip separately for better coordination is the key aspect of stable movement and power release. Yao Kua Fen Li is a very subtle practice but a key factor in practicing Tai Chi and advanced level. 3. For Yao Kua Fen Li practice, the hip should lead the waist. A famous Tai Chi term, Sun Yao Chen Kua or relax the waist and sink the hip 
is the general guiding principle for the overall practice of the waist and the hip area. First, three important principles related to Yao Kua Fen Li are first, Kua Wen Yao Huo, well, stepping forward or shift the body weight. The hips should be very stable, but the waist area should be flexible. Second, Fa Jin Tong Jin, when working on the Fa Jin movement, both the hips and the waist should be intensified at the last moment. Third, Shang Ti Xia Chen Zhong Jian Lian. When maintaining a structure, in general, the body area above the waist should have a lived energy, the area below the hip should have a sinking energy, and the area between the waist and the hip should have a connecting motion between these two parts. Fifth, a common misperception is that since Tai Chi practice emphasizes the concept of one part leading with others following, the waist and the hip should move together. Remember, that is a misperception. Actually, when one part moves, the energy of the other parts will follow, including subtle adjustment or subtle motions. Make sure to watch the demonstration section to have a better illustration of Yao Kua Fen Li in practice. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Enjoy your practice and have a happy new year.